Pinalis cinctulus, growing naturally on six continents and occupying more climates than any other psilocybin-containing mushroom, is the most common psychedelic species on the planet. They are mildly to sometimes moderately potent, and in my opinion, a great place to begin a love of mycology. The first thing to know when attempting to observe these mushrooms is where to look and when. They can be found on a variety of substrates, uh, but the most common are well-fertilized grass and planter beds. I'll leave it to you to find these environments. I don't want to just spoon feed it to you. That gets rid of all the fun. They most commonly grow in the spring and early to mid-summer, so um, they're around now. But I've seen them as early as February and late as October, so it's a pretty big window. The most important factor to me for identifying these little guys is the spore print. Remember that, we'll come back to it later. Um, but do not go looking without that information. Behind me, you can see many phenotypic variations in the species. A phenotype is just how it expresses physically, um, or looks. They can be tall and thin, being upwards of five to six inches, uh, with stems as thin as a few millimeters, or or quite stocky, pushing up to a half inch in width, with many variations in between. Young specimens are more often dark in color, uh, browns and deep reddish tones, with caps that can be from the size of a sharpie tip up to about an inch, that appear very round, bulb-like even. Of course, all of these things can change due to environmental conditions. As they get older, the caps can be up to about three inches wide, uh, but are usually in the inch and a half range. They tend to lighten up slightly, showing more beiges and lighter browns, but can remain just as dark and become more conical in shape um, to flat or even wavy. You may also see the gills protrude from the bottom of the cap with age, though this is not necessarily the case. The stems can range from white to brown to a deeper brownish red tone. Um, and can often have vertical striations running up their length. They can be straight or knobby and gnarled in appearance. Now, even if you identify all these characteristics, they don't mean shit without the color of the spores. Spores grow on the gills, on the underside of the caps. As the mushroom ages and produces more spores, the gills can become jet black. And I mean Vanta in this bitch. Young or very old specimens can be more difficult to retrieve spores from either because they haven't begun sporulating yet or they are too dry and no longer dropping. But say that you have a good mature specimen that is currently dropping spores, I highly recommend taking a spore print. In fact, I would try to enforce it. This can be done by carefully removing the mushroom cap from the stem and placing the cap face down on a sheet of paper, tinfoil, or glass. Um, come back a few hours later and take a look. If nothing's dropped, wait a little longer. If nothing else, try another one. If the print left is black, like super duper black, not brown or yellow or rusty orange, but black, jet black, then with all the previous identifying characteristics determined, you are looking at Penalis cinctulis. Hooray. I must reiterate, jet black spore print. Do not deviate. These mushrooms have a couple lookalikes. The most similar being Penalina phonoseci. Um, I just call them foes, and now you do too. Now, these can look identical to many variations of Penalis cinctulis, um, but the spore print is brown, so check that. There are other species that are less similar in appearance, but to an untrained eye can look like cinctulis to a hopeful forager. What's most important is that if you are unsure of what you have found, do not risk taking it. It is extremely important to be diligent in your identifying and to never throw caution to the wind. You could find a field of Penalis cinctulis mixed in with foes, agrocybes, conocybes, and other various species. Don't grab one by accident. Be meticulous, please. The guide I'm using here was originally submitted to the Shroomery forums by the user subhunter420, so big shout out to him and a thank you for your service to this community, and has since been expanded upon by other members of the community. This guide is linked below, and I highly recommend taking it with you when learning how to identify this mushroom. I want to give a big shout out to my patrons. Thank you all so much 
for your contribution to my work. It means the absolute world to me, and I can't appreciate it enough. If you'd like to join my Patreon, the link for that is in the description. And I hope to see you there.